But it was really a case of if I don't do it now, I am never going to do it. And it's back to th- that was the ultimate challenge, I think, for me to say, you know, it's all well and good. You can complain all you want about the boss. but It's only when you are the boss that you know what it's all about. The Architects of Business on Joe, in partnership with the EY Entrepreneur of the Year programme, telling the inspirational stories behind Ireland's most successful entrepreneurs. Hello and welcome back to The Architects of Business on Joe, made in partnership with EY's Entrepreneur of the Year, where we hear the inspirational stories of some of Ireland's most successful entrepreneurs. I'm your host, Sonia Lennon, and in this week's episode, I speak with Trina Milan, founder and CEO of MadMe Technologies, recently crowned EY's Emerging Entrepreneur of the Year 2019. Trina Milan. It is so good to have you on the couch, not least because you were the only female winner in the lineup at the recent EY Awards, the Entrepreneur of the Year Awards. I mean, best newcomer, what an accolade. How how did that feel? I mean, it's actually, it is actually hard to put into words, you know, the the kind of, um, it's a real wow moment. Um, The EY Awards are something that I said before you would have watched on TV over the years. Yeah. And kind of, you know, it, it's, it's... They're iconic. So they're iconic. And to be there and to be on stage and to be singled out like that, you know, it was just an amazing moment, to be honest. Did you, did you think you had it? Um, I thought it was in with a shot, I think. I think, to be fair, for, um, for you know, one of the things I was told by somebody when... Um, because it, it was recommended to me by alumni. They said, look, really, for quite a few years, people have been saying, for a couple of years, people have been saying, would you not put yourself forward? I was saying, no, 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 I'm not ready or whatever. And, um, and I'm busy, busy building the business. And, uh, and they said, the alumni network is amazing. You really should go into it. But if you go into it, go in it to win it. Yeah. Right. And I kind of thought, well, I don't normally do things with half measures, so I'm going to go for it. Brilliant. Because I felt, um, I felt I didn't, I felt I wanted to, represent not just myself, but my business well. You know, I really wanted to do, uh, not just for myself, but for the team, Yeah, you know, d- do a good job of it and give it my best shot. So before we dive into um, into history and, yeah. and I suppose where this all began, Mad Me Technologies. Yes. What do you do? So what we do is we help primarily for now, and this will, we will evolve into other sectors, but today we primarily support mobile operators around the world um, in how they engage in a new way with their customers on their phones. Um, And I think the really important point to make there is that the industry has evolved so much. Um, The the mobile operator space is, is from a telecoms perspective, is under immense pressure. Um, They're under pressure from a point of view of revenue. They're under pressure from a point of view of attention from their um, customers. Uh, The attention of people you know, who are using their mobile phones today are typically to the apps that are on the phone, Mm -hmm. to who made the phone, if it's an iPhone or if it's a Samsung. And even though the operators enable the entire infrastructure, the the entire network... They have no voice. They have no voice. That's exactly it. That's exactly what we do, Sonia. So what we do is... um, you know, as I'll say it in a few minutes, my background is SMS for many mm. years, text messaging. I helped build that out around the world in, in a former company. And, uh, and mobile operators today, in many cases, are still using texting in a world that's all rich media. They're using text as the way to communicate. You just look at all of the messages you get from your operator today. A lot of them Flash. are text. Whereas we have given them and we give them a platform uh, that's, that's all about rich media. That's um, all about getting attention from people. But in, you know, the right attention, the right time, in the right way. And that's why today we're on 200 million phones and growing. 200 million phones. 200 million phones. And yep. what's the rate of growth at the moment? So the rate of growth, you see, the, the, the way that we grow is we work with mobile operators. So and, you grow in big chunks. Us. We grow in big chunks. So, for instance, we are with two of the top operators in India, the two top operators in India. And India is 1.3 billion people. Uh, 1.3 billion people, largest democracy on the planet. You know, I think if there's for me a, a bit of a kind of a pinch me moment, it's when you realise, wow, we're on hundreds of millions of phones in India out of a small country in Ireland. That's the kind of excitement that kind of gets me up in the morning. Put a pin in it, Trina. <laughs> Let's go back. It's, yeah. it's so amazing. It's so amazing. Yeah. I want to know where this started. Right. So 
I'm little Trina. Little Trina. <laughs> little Trina. A hands on <laughs> hips. Oh, yes. <laughs> I probably was that, actually. Um, youngest of five uh, from Capamore County Limerick. And, um, you know, I'll talk a minute about my mother because when, during the awards night, I would have talked about my mother and how my mother was a big influence for me. But I think, you know, an, an equally big influence for me uh, would have been my father. So I was the youngest. I was one at home and everyone else was gone off. Um, so my my brother is two years older than me, but my sister is six years older okay. than me. And then I have two older brothers again. So, you know, I was the youngest partner around at home and my father worked in the ESB and, my, and I would have definitely you know, um, run around after my dad, mm. right? And uh, he used to come home at lunchtime. And was he an me. engineer? And he was, no, he worked in the ESB and he he, he was, he, he wasn't an engineer, but he was a line supervisor. So he had big teams all over North Tipperary. And he would have brought me with him sometimes in the afternoon. He'd come home at lunchtime and he'd bring me off with him. And uh, and I loved that. I mean, I was what, six, seven, eight, whatever I was at the time. So he was quite holidays. the forward thinker at that stage. He was, yes. he was uh, you know, into deep parenting when it wouldn't have even been fashionable, really. Oh, yeah, no, no, absolutely. And then the thing is, I think he was fantastic around the house, you know, in terms of building things and making things. And I would have been right beside him, you yeah. know, holding the nails. Yes. Watching what he was doing, saying, what are you doing now? And, um, and, you know, so I could wire a plug <laughs> when I was very young yeah. because I think it was the, um, you know, he would have encouraged me if I if I did that. He was like, aren't you great? Yeah. I'd have been able to do that. Um, so I think when I look back, there's no question that that would have led me to decide from fairly early on. I want to do something like engineering. Brilliant. You know? So I really, you know, my sister is a teacher and a fabulous teacher. And uh, my mother was, would have been keen for me to do teaching. Um, but I would have said from early on, no, no, I'm not, I'm, I'm not cut out to be a teacher. Uh, I really wanted to do engineering. And um, so, you know, through and through school, I, you know, I liked, I, you know, maths would be my thing. Yeah. I, I like maths. Um, always liked maths. It was my favourite subject. And, um, and, so, and married that with the practicalities. Yes. That becomes yeah. engineering, I suppose. Yes, doesn't that it? becomes yeah. engineering. And then, um, and then, so... As a result, when it came to filling out the, the dreaded CAO, you know, what to put on the dreaded CAO, I put down mechanical engineering. And I, and I look back on it, I don't know, was I 17? And it was the naivety of saying, yeah. mechanical engineering. It sounded, it nearly sounded like the most engineering engineering, if yeah. you know what I mean. Mechanical, like that's real engineering, yeah. right? But then when it came to it and I got the position, I got, the, I got that and I was all happy. My mother was going, mechanical engineering. Do you really want to do mechanical yeah. engineering? She said, do you know now? And she said, you have the points. And she was working in the college at the time in the University of Limerick. And she said, there's this great computer systems course. And, you know, there's space in that. And I could, you know, you could move over to that. Would you not do that for a month? You always liked computers in school. Would you not just try it? Would you not just try it for a month? If you don't like it, you can move back. And that was the sliding doors moment that then, was really, wasn't it? the sliding doors moment. It was. And it was, and I think, you know, I wasn't, uh, to be honest, it was nearly like, well, computer, si computer science, computer systems, that's pretty close to engineering. That's still, you know, pretty technical. You were trying to kind of rationalise it in your head. I wanted to do something technical. Yeah. I really wanted to do something kind of, um, um, it's not even non-traditional, probably non-traditional in that sense at that yeah. time, you know? Yeah, yeah. Probably yeah. something that not as many girls were doing purely because I, I just wanted to sort of say, is there no reason I couldn't do that? Why couldn't I do that? That's just so beautiful. And, and I'm sure that those early years with your yeah. dad, uh, have a huge role to play in that, but also that 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 you know that piece of if you if you can't see it you can't be it. Your mother yeah. was exposed to that course through her work in UL. If she yes. hadn't known about it, she wouldn't have encouraged you to do it. Oh yeah, no, absolutely, and um, and I think uh, you know, and that's why I wanted to to uh, recognise that for her. And I think to be fair, it was give a shout out nearly yeah. to I think encourage other parents to realise that I think. It's fantastic when kids know what they want to do. Yeah. But so many kids don't know what they want to do. Right. And they, you know, parents can be, you know, we can encourage our kids. It's not to tell them what to do, but it's to, well, to open the them, options, to isn't open it? open the options, yeah. to talk to them about, well, look, you always liked, my, even my mother saying that to me at the yeah. time, I can distinctly remember, she said, you always liked computers in school. Now I think we had like 
two Commodores or two Ataris Hilarious. or something inside in a little computer room in, in, in school. So I don't know what I was doing on the Playing bus. tennis on your Playing break. Playing tennis <laughs> on the break. Maybe I was, I don't know, the early version of Word or something, typing something in. But I, you know, I did quite enjoy them, yeah. right? So when she said that to me, it was like, yeah, that's true, you know. Because again, as I said, I, you know, this is now just, I, I, I'll segue onto all these various things. But I was thinking about this the other day in terms of, um, because it's, it's, it's clearly a big challenge in the industry. There aren't as many girls, as many women in tech as we'd like. There's, there's even, it's, it's really disappointing to me, there's even less now, I think, than there even were when I was going. When I went into that course, into my computer systems degree, uh, eight of the class were girls and 16 were fellows. So it was right. a third. And, and you wouldn't have a third a day going into you computer wouldn't. science. So... But it was an interesting thing. I was in a school a, f a couple of years ago and I was doing a talk to transition year students and um, and it was a girls school and I was standing up talking about the future of tech and I was, you know, and, and uh, I, you know, I'm very passionate about that. I'm very passionate about explaining to kids in general, not just girls. We need more boys as well doing it. Right. Um, it's all around us. Tech is all around us. Computers are in everything now, mm -hmm. from connected cars to your phone. Every single thing they're using, every facet of your life has a computer in it. And All business is tech. All business is tech at this stage. And um, what was really interesting was all uh, just huge engagement from the girls. This was in the school. And huge engagement. But they came down to me, and so many of them, the same question. So, Patrina, what, what do you do all day? Like, what is it they that you... They didn't understand it. They didn't understand what it is you would be doing all day. And, of course... How could you expect them to? Because they have no idea. Yeah. You know, they don't they don't see what it is and what they and they said, would you be like coding all day? And I've never done any coding. And again, I'm saying, you know, programs like Coder Dojo is, are fantastic, mm. but you don't have to have done that. You don't have any. I had no computer programming skills when I started. And so trying to explain to them, no, no, it's not coding all mm. day. There's a fantastic team atmosphere. You're working as part of a team. You can go into any area. You can be incredibly creative. You can do design, you know, within it. And, and I actually think, I think, um, notwithstanding the great work that there has been around this push for STEM, yeah. it's slightly misrepresentative of the actual opportunities available, which are much yes. broader, you know. Yes. Um, and I think there's a piece of work to do around that yeah. because you know, we, sh we should be exposing that a little bit more to say that whatever your area of interest, you can slot into STEM. Yes. Um, but yeah, it's, it's really yeah. interesting. Really I interesting. mean, there's, there's a suggestion now for another programme for you, Sonia. You know, I was thinking about this as well and I thought, because I have a daughter who's 17 at the moment, she's trying to decide what she's going to put in her CEO. She's in fifth year, but she's trying to decide what does she want to do. And uh, it is that fact that for so many kids, they just don't know what those jobs are. They see teachers, they see doctors, they see certain skills, they see certain roles. But for so much of it, they don't see it. Well, funny, I, I did a careers talk the other day um, in my daughter's school. Um, and when I spoke to them all, I, the first thing I told them was to, to go and search um, future jobs, the jobs that wouldn't exist, yes. that don't exist now, that yep. would exist when yep. they're out of college. And rather than to choose their college course, look for jobs that might yeah. interest them and find the college course that's going to get them there. Or maybe yeah. there isn't a college course. Maybe there's a direct route. And yes. I think more increasingly, um, you know, we're, we're looking at alternative avenues right. that, that can get us to where we need to go. Yeah. But anyway, yes. um, let's talk about what happened when yeah. you left the course. What, yes. what was, what was the, the career journey that came out of that? Well, I think, you know, and, and uh, again, kind of looking back, the retrospective on it in terms of what kind of led me to start Mad Me and a, a technology company that's globally focused, that's very innovative, which is what we, we try to be. Um, it, it all started when I left college because when I left college, you know, there were uh, jobs in many different places and you could go into the bank or you could go into various different places. But for me, I really wanted to work in something kind of um, leading edge, cutting edge tech. And there was a company starting up and uh, it's fairly famous at this point because a number of the alumni, actually, Joe Hogan, mm -hmm. who um, was founder and, and CTO of another great Irish company, OpenNet. Joe is an alumni. Um, he's a Retix alumni. So mm -hmm. he was in that company with me. Um, um, a, a, another fantastic guy who's also an alumni, Raymal Pereira. Raymal's an alumni know, from Retix. Raymal, yeah. And uh, so Retix was a, was a California-based, Santa Monica-based company. And they decided to set up an R&D centre in Dublin. Right. What and year would that have this been? This would be then? 1988. Wow. And can I just say, Sonia, it was the job. 
in 1988, right? Um, there was huge competition to get into that company because they had done this really amazing milk round. They had gone around six months earlier and they had said, we'll bring people to California to show you what it's like to work in our company. And they'd done that in all the universities. And I was in UL or NIHE as it was called then. Mm -hmm. And they went to UCD Trinity and they went around the country. And, scooped uh, up all the top talent. Scooped up the top talent. But it was funny because I didn't, I didn't get on that trip. I was super eager and uh, and I was interviewed for it. A number of us were, but I didn't get on the trip. So I was kind of gutted. But that didn't mean you didn't get it. That was that mm. was six months earlier. And in fact, I don't know that any of the people who got on the trip got That's the job. That's funny. Right. So then when it came to the interview for that, it was just the company that I just wanted to get into because it was doing kind of. Um, so to give you an idea, if you know Cisco, who mm. are the people who have been the foundation of the entire Internet in terms of data comms and telecoms, um, Retix would have been side by side with Cisco at the time, cutting edge in the kind of next generation of communications data comms. So building out the future networks. And uh, so that was the job. And I got that job, right? And there was 10 grads they took on. There was only a small group of people. And it was the most amazing company. What was your job title? So I was a software engineer. Fantastic. In, in, uh, in Retix. And, uh, and that company then, I mean, I kind of, um, I was there for seven years and I spent a lot of time in California, spent a lot of time in Santa Monica. And even that, you know, I mean, I was from, you know, Capamore County Limerick and the next minute I'm over in Santa Monica in my early 20s. And, uh, you know, it was, Seeing pretty, it all. it was pretty amazing, actually. It was pretty just phenomenal. Trina, there's no doubt that at that stage of your career, you uh, were beginning to think globally. We're going to take a short break and yep. we're going to come back and, and see where that global thinking took you. The Architects of Business on Joe, in partnership with the EY Entrepreneur of the Year programme. So, Trina, global thinker, yep. uh, Hot company, the right position, seven yes. years, what happened next? So then I, um, so seven years, now it's the mid 90s and I'm kind of looking at um, mobile technology. I was approached hot by... Hot new thing. Hot new thing. <laughs> <laughs> I was approached by um, a company called Aldiscon. And again, you see, there are these companies that uh, that would have been very significant in the growth of Irish tech today, I would say. Retics, a lot of the people out of Retics have, have gone on to great careers and been involved in the growth of new companies. Aldiscan was another one of those. So Aldiscan at that time, if you've heard of Iona Technologies, mm -hmm. well, Aldiscan was on one side of Hamilton, of Pembroke Road, Pembroke Street, and Iona was the other side, right? So we were the two, at that stage, frankly, the two hot tech companies in Ireland. And what Aldiscan was doing was building out SMS, so text messaging. And... Uh, this was before anybody knew about text messaging. Text messaging actually came from Ireland. That's extraordinary. Right? So many people don't know that. And I'm always saying this to people, you know, you, you really need to realise. Text messaging. We were around the world in Japan, uh, with Docomo, in, with at and in Seattle, all over the world. Uh, selling this new. Selling text messaging to operators everywhere. And this was before people were using it for person-to-person -person messaging. You know, this was being used firstly for... You know, things like um, you have a voicemail to get people to call back somebody. So, yes. Right? And um, so I started in there and in a senior role, I was one of the kind of C-level people at that point. So I went, I had had a kind of a very um, fairly fast career trajectory in, in Retix and I'd moved up into management positions and I'd moved up along, but I'd always stayed very technology focused. Mm -hmm. I was, that was kind of really important to me to to hold on to the technology piece. And uh, I moved in to um, into Aldiscan and I became head of engineering there. So I would have had about a team of about 100 people at Amazing. that point working for me um, across everything from development to test to uh, project management. And um, and that was, again, a phenomenal company and again, very much globally focused. And I think, you know, again, back to the um, the if you can't see it, you can't be it. I remember Again, I had some fabulous uh, people there who, again, you know, the, the importance of people supporting you in your career, you know. P uh, you know, I mentioned Raymel in my um, in my Retix days, mm. but then it was people like Larry Quinn and Gilbert Little and people like that in the Aldous Gone days. And I remember Gilbert, and I often say this, had an expression, um, we live in Ireland, but we don't make our living in Ireland. Beautiful. Right? And uh, so it, it was it was never the case that why couldn't we? Conquer the world. Something and conquer the world. And you knew that your com competition was global. You know, 
you want to be global, your competition is global, you need to be the best globally. And that really, in terms of the ultimate challenge, for me, it was always about kind of challenging myself and then being in companies that were kind of challenging, um, challenging the business model, challenging the rules and doing things they had no place to be doing and kind of, um, I suppose, ultimately the best expression is punching above your weight, you know, and, and, and that's, what, that's what we did. So I, I was head of engineering there and then we were bought by, we were acquired by a big um, UK system integrator called Logica mm -hmm. and, um, and I then stayed with them and I moved to the States and that was really a family decision. You know, my husband and myself, we had a, a one year old. Um, you know, I look back and I think, was that the most sensible thing? We're going away from <laughs> all the people who can help mind this one year old. We, we moved to the States, but we just we, we had never lived outside of Ireland. And we a just little said, pot shot. Why not? Why not? Right. And, and 10 years later, we came back. But we, we um, so we, we so we went to the States and I became CTO for the Americas for Logica for the for that division in the States. And then I um, and helped to at that point, America was behind Europe in terms of text messaging. So grew text messaging all over the States, American Idol, text voting on American wow. Idol, all of that. Like it was just astronomical growth in terms of the service. And so that. so it, there's a beautiful kind of chronology about your um, uh, amassed learnings throughout this yeah. whole process. At what point did, did the penny drop that you could take that and, and take it out of those organisations and do it for yourself? Well, then I suppose then the third, the, the third pillar that just became before Mad Me was um, I came back then. We, we came back. We again made the decision. We'd now had three children and really it was, you know, we wanted to come home to Ireland. We wanted the kids to uh, go to secondary school in Ireland, the kind of very traditional, you know, the, not the traditional, but it's what a lot of people would do. Mm -hmm. You know, you go away for a lot of mm -hmm. years and then you really want to come home to family and and, uh, and Ireland is great. And um, I, uh, at that point, joined a company. I was again sought out, I suppose, when I came back and I joined a company called Nubay Software. And Nubay Software was, again, cutting edge, leading edge, and we were building out um, consumer backup. So if you know Dropbox today, we were pre-Dropbox for mobile operators. And um, I was CTO in that company. And I'll, I'll cut to the chase very quickly there. That was a phenomenal journey again, again, you know, selling all over the world. And I uh, and we were bought by BlackBerry at the end of 2011. And it was during that time that I would have definitely said, OK, you know, when we exit this, I'm going to do my own thing. I had always been thinking about it and I kind of had felt that it was at that moment in 2011, end of 2011, we had been, we, we had been sold to BlackBerry. I, I would have told them I'll stay for a while, but I, I want to do my own thing. Right. It's always been my dream to do my own thing. And that was and frankly, that was a bit of a, a little bit of a scary moment as well, because I had I had I had plenty of other options. You know, I was you know, I could have gone into and easier options and easier options. Um, but it was really a case of if I don't do it now, I am never going to do it. And it's back to th that was the ultimate challenge, I think, for me to say, you know, it's all well and good. You can complain all you want about the boss. but It's only when you are the boss that you know what it's all about. And I suppose um, it, it sounds to me like you were ready um, that in terms of business within an organisation, you'd pretty much faced an, every challenge at that yeah. stage that the only way that you could kind of enter into a growth zone was to do it yourself. Yeah, I, I think, I, you know, I probably looked at it and said uh, you know, a big part of this, which is, is, is uh, possibly not coming across, is that I had been CTO, I'd been technology, but I was a very commercially focused CTO in that I had, you know, I had always, I, I had built enough technology over, over years and seen it maybe somebody not selling it and saying... Wasted opportunities. Wasted opportunities and said... You know, it's, it really is all about knowing your market and engaging with your market and making sure that if you build something, that there is somebody there to buy it from you. Right? And that's, that's quite a rare skill to have both sides of that coin. Yeah. So, so that would have been one of the kind of probably unusual traits, which would have, again, helped me to say, well, um, you know, I have the mix. I, I understand the technology. I know what it's going to take to build something. And 
I also hopefully have enough sense to know what it's, what it's going to take to sell something. And I have a lot of, of great relationships, which is another huge thing. Um, and that's also led to why, why Mad Me, why the mobile space again. Because you, know, you knew all the operators. Yeah, I knew the operators. And I would have spent a year thinking about it and really researching. And um, so I did take a bit of time out um, between uh, the, the New Bay Blackberry um, situation and starting Mad Me to kind of review the market and really say, well, where is the market at the moment? Where is there an opportunity? You know, who has a challenge that um, that I could help with, you know? And um, how and long that, was that process? Well, that took me, you know, I mean, I was doing other things. I took a few months and then I was approached by um, a company to do some consulting for them. And I said, look, I'll do a bit of consulting. But at the same time, I'm you yeah, know, whirring in the background. Whirring in the background. <laughs> so I would say that that was all of 2012. OK. So it was really 2013. It was 2012, really 2013 that I said, OK. And I had the kind of a germ of an idea at that point and, uh, you know, kind of bootstrapped a very basic prototype of this idea of this new way of engaging on the device. And how many customers. were in the bootstrapping team? So there was me. And then I had um, a group of people that did some work for me that I got to separately yeah. on, a, on, on contracted. A, contracted. Yeah. Um, and uh, got some people to contract up and, and just put something together for me that I could take out with me and showcase and sort of say, if you had this, what would you think? And, yeah, and would again, you pay for it? Would you pay for it? <laughs> would you pay for it? Please, please, would you pay for it? And would you do a trial? Yeah. And would you pay me for the trial? Um, but... Again, you know, I, you know, a really important thing I think is, you know, is the importance of uh, the relationships. But I so appreciate my customers because, um, particularly the folks in the early days, the operators who gave me a shot, who tried it, who said, "We see where you're coming from. We know, you know, you know, we know what you're saying. It makes sense." Why don't we try it on 100,000 phones? Let's try it with a certain group of customers. No pressure. Let's see, <laughs> right? Let's see how it goes. Let's measure it, you know. And, uh, and another big thing for me, I think, always, again, coming from the technology background, was I always felt that um, it's a huge thing to me to deliver what I promise I'm going to deliver, you know. So... Um, a source of pride. Yeah, well, a huge source of pride, but also that's longevity in the industry. You know, if you if you have a reputation for not delivering, <laughs> you won't you won't stick around for too long. So, for me, um, and again, that's why I'd say, why are we on hundreds of millions of phones today? Because, you know, we 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 do what we say we're going to do, and um, I'm 24 by seven available. I have a phenomenal team, and how many is in the team now? So we have uh, just over is it about 32. Um, Brilliant. So it's quite a quite a neat team it is, to be it delivering is, yeah. such impact. It is. And again, though, I, you know, uh, I again, it's the importance of surrounding yourself with fantastic people who are bringing skills you don't have and recognising the skills you don't have and bringing together with you the kind of people that have the same values that you have and the same interests that you have and the same commitment and the same dedication and um, and will represent the company, the way you want the company to be represented, you know, matters to them. That matters to them, and uh, so, you know, so I would have, you know, a fantastic team around me, um, doing that, and uh, and it's a distributed team, yeah. Um, but um, but you know, so so we all share in that um, pride. Of and how how delivering. do you um, how do you keep the culture and the consistency with with a, a team that is dispersed across? different countries and not centralised. I mean, I know you, yeah. you, you have your base in Ireland, but, but you have a spread team as well. Yes, yeah. Um, I, you know, I suppose I'm quite hands-on in certain respects, even though, um, and what I, what I mean by that is I'm not in the nitty gritty though of the engineering. So I trust my team to, to do it, right? Um, but I think there's, there's two things, I suppose. I hope I lead by example, mm -hmm. right? I am very enthusiastic. I'm very energised. I'm probably, I hope... Uh, very can do. Yeah. Yes, we can. You yeah. know, um, we celebrate yeah. the successes. We recognize the milestones as we're going. You know, it's um, we're kind of it's a shared mission. Yeah. Reminding everybody all the time. Isn't that amazing? So you know, you're working off an abundance you know, model as opposed to a deficit yeah. model. <laughs> yeah. 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 But also it's um, really appreciating the team, yeah. you know, like so, I, so, and recognizing uh, each of the kind of, you know, it's from every single one of those folks are doing their own job. If they weren't doing their own job, if they weren't working... The mission their would area, fail. mission would fail. And so, in some ways, 
you you have expanded um, the the brain power of Mad Me by uh, by winning this award and by the yep. journey to win the award with yep. the alumni that you've met uh, who have been on the same journey as you, but also the other alumni. Oh. I mean, what um, wh- what a major bonus for, for your business. And yep. are you already seeing the benefits of that? Oh, completely. I mean, sorry, I, I was seeing the benefits of it from when I was um, shortlisted or when I became a finalist. You know, going to Hong Kong was just amazing. Uh the, the thing about, I think, the And for anybody who doesn't know, um, the EY finalists yes. go on a, a number of trips and then the yeah. alumni also have access to those trips. And they're learning trips and yes. networking yes. trips. Yeah. yeah, which I will certainly be going on. <laughs> and, uh, no, but, but I think, as you know, when, when these are the kinds of things that you learn when, you're, when you start out yourself, right? I, I think, and I, I'm sure you know this, Sonia, better than most, um, it's quite a lonely, it can be quite a lonely job insofar as the book stops at you. And the book didn't stop at me before I started this in quite the same way. I might have, I might have been very senior in the team, but the book, book really stops at you, right? And uh, the ability to be part of a network of people or an alumni like that who get it to the same degree is, is amazing. So there's like-minded people but then there's also people who are in the industry as well, yeah. you know, who are global. You know, the, the number of people, if you look at the alumni network, and I remember Anne Herity made this comment at something we were at. And I mean, Anne is another f- fabulous alumni member. And she made a comment that, um, you know, there wasn't any place in the world near that she couldn't go, that she wouldn't be able to reach out and find somebody, you know, from the alumni it's network. It's extraordinary, isn't yeah. it? And and also, I think it's a, a lot of the power of it seems to be um, the, the slightly left of centre mindset of the entrepreneur. So you're like yes. a pack of really high achieving pirates, yeah. you know, because you don't play by the rules. No. You, you, cr- yeah. you create your own game yeah. with your own rules. Yeah. Um, and, and I'm sure within that you found, um, you know, personal connections ha- have evolved very quickly. Oh, completely. But it's, it's, it's all about, I mean, it's all about relationships. You know, that's again the thing that I realised. You know, I started out and I was always about it's the technology. It's going to be about the skill and having that skill and, and really being, you know, the best you can be at your job, right? And that's absolutely one side of it. But on the other side, it's all about relationships and the relationships you build over, you know, a, a lifetime of your career with your customers, with your team, you know. It's, it is all about those. So for me, with the alumni, I, I'm looking at the Irish alumni. And I'm looking at the global alumni. I'm looking at the American alumni. You know, the EY program is an amazing program. And I remember talking to them saying, OK, so can I get the list of the alumni <laughs> in the US? <laughs> you see with me, Sonia, I'm, you know, I'm always focused on um, business development is a huge part of this. You know, it's all about. So you're not finished, Trina. Not finished. Remotely, no, <laughs> no, 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 no. We're, we're, we're emerging, we're emerging, yeah. Trina, you know, it's a very positive note to end on that in, um, in your world yeah. of high technology and, and globalisation, that what matters most to you is people and relationships. It's been an absolute pleasure to talk to you. Thank you so much. Sonia. Thank you. Thanks for tuning in to the Architects of Business on Joe, made in partnership with EY Entrepreneur of the Year. Thanks to everybody here at Maximum Studios and of course to our fabulous guest, Trina Milan. If you haven't already done so, please do subscribe to get a brand new episode of Architects of Business into your feed every fortnight for free.